Okay, so we are going to have a look at another game posted on Reddit. And this user played a county chess championship game in Chicago, playing in the under 1600 section. And the game was 45 minutes with a five second delay. He is rated 1303 when his opponent is 1487. And our hero in this game had the black pieces. And he made some good annotations himself, you know, explaining his moves. And I always appreciate that, you know, when, when you want to improve yourself, I am more willing to help. And hopefully this will be helpful. So let's dive into the game. It was E4, C6. The Karakan. So he says, I always play the Karakans against e4. I know the themes of the opening, such as the c5 push, and get my queen's rook to c8, etc. Okay, d3. And he says that, yeah, uh, admittedly, I was already out of book. I'd never seen d3 before. Seemed to pass it to me. Uh, because it doesn't establish any control in the center and blocks in white light squared bishop. I figured d5 was logical by staking a claim to e4 and d5, contesting white's e4 pawn. So he played d5, which is, well, the Karakan way. You play c6 to, take, to play d5, so you play it almost, well, literally against any second move by white. Uh, it's slightly passive in a way, but but it's a, it's a logical move. White wants to play the king's Indian attack, which is the king's Indian reversed. So basically, almost no matter what you do, he will play knight d2, he will play knight to f3, he will play f3, and bishop d2, and then get castled. So this is the king's Indian attack. You can play this against the Karakan, the French defense, and some Sicilians. So he plays knight d2, which you say seemed like a poor move to me. It blocks in white dark squared bishop, etc. Um, you mentioned that d3 blocked in light squared bishop. It's not really relevant because white wants to play g3 and bishop to g2. So it's actually okay. You're right that it blocks the dark squared bishop, but it's necessary to control e4 without giving up castling rights. So if, if, uh, if white goes for like g3, you can take on e4. And now you uh, prevent him from castling. So knight d2 is mostly because of that. So knight d2, and now you played e6. You said yourself, I should have played e5 controlling more of the center. You're absolutely correct. I figured to play solid and defend d5, despite feeling like I should have punished white for the passive move. When you're black, especially in, a, in an opening like, like uh, the Karakan, don't think about punishing your opponent. Uh, there's nothing to punish at such an early stage with black. Just think about getting your pieces out, develop nicely, get castled, and you know, go from there. Uh, you know, you can't, there's nothing to punish. e6, you talk about defending d5, defend what? It, it's well defended. You have nothing to defend. Why not e5? That's the principal move. Establish the center. Solid. From there you can develop bishop d6, knight f6, get castled. That should be the main goal of the opening, to get castled and go from there. So already I don't like I don't like this move. It's too passive. There's no reason to to uh, lock in this bishop just yet. So e5 or get some pieces out. So e6, okay, he plays knight g2 f3. And uh, I really dislike the next move. White develops the knight, is now closer to castling, correct. Controls e5, d4, etc. Knight d7 with the idea of the c5 push coming in the near future. Why do you need knight d7 for c5? You don't. You can play c5 if you want. So you don't need that knight d7. So the number one priority is to get the pieces out and get castled. So play knight f6, play bishop e7, and castle. 
also, when you play knight d7, you're taking away the d7 square from this knight. So if you play knight f6, he plays e5. You need this d7 square for your queen's for your king's knight. So I'm just blocking it. Another point: if he were to take on d5, you take with the c pawn. Now you want the c6 square for your knight. So there's no need to develop this knight. You know, don't develop your queen's knight. Develop a king's knight and get castled. There's two committal. There's no need to commit this knight. So knight d7. Okay, he plays e5. Okay, he's moving the pawn again, but now you like a good a good square for this knight. You would prefer this move. So you play knight d7, which is okay. Um, I like knight d7 because after the c5 push, the knight will have a nice home on c6, adding to my queen set advantage. It's true that in most cases you want to play c5, but you don't have a queen set advantage. The French is a counter attacking opening. You're trying to counter attack. Mostly on the queen side, sometimes on the king side with f6. So you don't have any advantage. We're just trying to get developed and then think about our counterplay. Okay, he played d4, c5. Uh, unblocks the center and unblocks the light square bishop. Okay, but I think he's still stuck with. Even though he started out playing a king side attack, he, I think he's still. And now the pawns are here. I think he's still stuck in this mindset that he wants to play the king's indian attack so as he did in the game he'll play g3 bishop d2 so that's what you know novice players tend to do they recognize some, some idea and they have a hard time adjusting and, and stick to that idea so after c5 he plays c3 which is normal and now a few days ago i did another video uh, where I analyzed the game from a Reddit user. It was also the French defense, the advanced variation. And there I criticized a too early c takes d4. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. You play c takes d4. And you set, um, you're having a future pawn break with f6. Yes, in the future, I, I like it. I felt like my position was getting rather cramped. So I decided to liberate my pieces with a pawn exchange and now can place my queen and rook on the open c file. Okay, you, you're still very far away from development. You have to get this guy moved, then you have to move this guy, then you have to castle, then you have to find a way to get this guy out. To do that, you have to move this guy, and then you can think about the c-file. It's too early. Uh, novice players tend to be afraid of tension. Just keep the tension. Just keep the pawns like this. It's for your benefit. For instance, if you were to play a move like I think knight c6 is the best move. And let's say he plays bishop d3, d3, normal move, he plays bishop b7. Okay, he'll castle, you will castle. But notice that, you know, he wants to eventually develop this knight to get this bishop out, right? And now by keeping the tension, already you took away one option. He can't play knight b3 because he will play c4, forking two pieces. So, you know, keep the tension. You, you can always take on d4. You're, you're not really... You don't lose anything by keeping the tension. Also, he can't release the tension because once you have a knight on c6, as he should play, you have this pressure on e5. So he can't relieve the pressure himself. So just keep the tension. You know, I'm, I'm not a fan of uh, the advice to take as a mistake, but in this case it applies it. To take as a mistake. So he took... Uh, queen uh, knight c6 he decided to go with g3 but now that he's opened up he should just go with bishop d3 so no need to spend time on this bishop d3 is a much more natural move now you might be able to break with f6 but okay you, you go and develop i like that get castled okay now you have a normal french position you're more or less ready to uh, to break with uh, with f6 Okay, uh, uh, what do you say here after this? After we both retreat our kings to safety, I know why it's backward pawn on d4. It's not really backward. Um, it is backward, but you, you can't really attack it. If it, if it was on a half open file, I would call it backward. Maybe, uh, you know, the definition is... 
is uh, I'm mixing it up, but it's not important. You're not going to win that pawn. Okay, so with my knight on c6, already I in queen b6, that's a second attacker. Okay, d4 is currently only defended once. Yes, it's only defended once. So white has defended. Uh, yeah, it's quite easy, it just moves the knight. No problem. Mm hmm. But yeah, you figured he would move his knight, okay. But now you could push a4, threatening a4, etc. Losing control over b4. Oh, yeah, that's good thing, though. Know? And that's more or less what happened. You played uh, queen b6, he played knight b3. Um, yeah, okay. And you played a5, intending a4 to dislodge the knight. Um, he played a4. If he doesn't want to, okay, it's probably a bit too advanced. But he can like play rook b1 and then reroute the knight through a1, but that's not likely to happen. So he went with a4. Okay, you're right. Now you have the b4 square. But it's still it's still a fight. It's a positional fight. Okay, um, bishop b3. Okay, I'm 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 reading a bit ahead. A4, and now, yeah, now you played f6. I figured knight b4 is always going to be there, yes, true. Since it's controlled by my pawn knight on c6 and my dark square bishop, so I decided to initiate the pawn break now. Mm -hmm, okay, he played bishop to e3. And you took on e5. I think it's still fine. Knight takes, knight d takes. Good option, because this is... The worst knight because it was preventing your bishop from moving. D takes e5 and queen d8. Okay, this is a bit risky. Uh, not this, but queen b4. I think I would prefer the c7 square if if possible. But queen d8, probably nothing hugely wrong with that he played f4 to defend the pawn which was attacked and now bishop d7 at this point i would think that white is somewhat better but not a whole lot i mean we quite often uh, have to accept a slightly inferior position with black but it's very resilient exchange the dark squid bishops this is what white wants to do with you know with the pawns on black squares and this will create some weaknesses that are hard to defend and leave you with a bad light square bishop okay after h4 rook c8 he went rook c1 okay and knight to b4 white blinks first and responds my plan and i want and i want to plant my knight in white's territory and challenge for the c file after the exchange, my eight pawn will be undefended by his knight, will be very poorly placed and can be targeted for an attack on a5. I'm not sure about that, let's see. Rook takes, queen takes, and he takes on a5. Yeah, actually, you might be right about that one. Because there's a very nice tactical point it's not what you played you played uh bishop c5 however there was a very nice move here b6 and the idea is similar to in the game the knight doesn't really have a whole lot of prospects and if it goes back you take on a4 similar to what happened in the game and if he takes you have bishop c5 check now if he doesn't want to lose the bishop he has to take but now the queen check wins the knight. A very nice tactic. So this would have won the game immediately. You play bishop c5 instead. And now he gets out of it with bishop f2. Queen c1 or queen d2 were also very solid options just to protect the bishop. And now you play b6 okay he doesn't really have a choice he goes to b3 and you take on a4 and now 
yeah, I think I would prefer black here. But uh, it, it's 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 probably very close to equal. He, uh, yeah, like so often happens, he has problems with attention and leaves it with an exchange. But a move like queen th to f3 seems good. If you do nothing, you might think about uh, rook c1 in some cases. But everything seems to be under control, everything is defended and, and white should be okay. Instead he takes on c5. Relieves the tension and now you get to fix your pawns. And you're already threatening c4. He has to do something about that. He plays queen to f3, eliminates the pin. And you go queen c7. You want to get the queen to b6. Yeah, in general that's, that's pretty decent. And you're thinking about the threat of, of c4. I mean, it's, it's pretty hard, easy to meet. You can just play king h2 and there, there is no threat. I mean, you should want to put something on the b file because it's a half open file and there's a weak pawn. Not to make a one move threat. We need to get away from this concept of one move threats, you know, just for the sake of it. If it improves our position, let's do it, but don't do it just for the sake of a one move threat. Okay, the game goes on, bishop h3, uh, queen b6, you defend the pawn, so he attacked it and you defend it, and now you get your uh, threat in. He seems to see it and plays king g2, uh, king h2 looks more natural, not to be on, uh, on this diagonal. So he goes king g2, which uh, I don't like. And you play c4. d4 looks pretty fine as well to get your bishop on this diagonal, right? You play c4, which is probably okay because he doesn't have a great square for the knight. He can't go forward because of your queen, so he has to go backward. Knight c1. And now you play d4. Excellent, excellent. Getting ready to put the bishop on c6. And now. Yeah, now he just plunders. He plays b3, and after bishop c6, you get his queen. Okay, he gets this, but uh, the queen is more important. And yeah, I don't really have a lot of comments on the rest. Let's just quickly go through it. e6. You have a queen for uh, a piece, and what? Two pawns. King f2, queen d6, f5. Yeah, just activate your pieces. The knight on b4 is not doing anything, so get it closer to the center. Knight d3. Knight d7. Yeah, okay, I mean, what? Well, seems like whatever. You're attacking f5. He plays g4. What did he actually resign here? What happened? g4. Oh, he lost on time. Okay. Okay, and you say I thought I played a very strong game, but under time pressure, I resorted to simply responding to my opponent's moves instead being up a queen for a bishop and two pawns should have put the pressure on him and make him respond to my threats yeah it's true but really you're up so much material you don't really have to do anything but to just you know keep the status quo and once you've consolidated move forward like in the final position you can play check and take the pawn etc yeah but overall uh, I think you did a pretty good job and you know some good things you can take out of this also hopefully I gave you some some good tips especially in the opening you know don't define your plans too early yeah, one more thing I would like to add if we, if we go back to knight d2 and you played knight d7 here yeah like if you play if you go to the French defense e4 e6 white sometimes plays the King's Indian attack here, d5, knight d2, knight f6, and this is the main line. And one of the most common moves of black here is to play c5 immediately. c5. So if we go to your game, after his move, knight g2, f3, in the Karakhan, if you now play knight f6, it actually looks like he got this from the French, but instead of going c5, he played c6, which nobody would play and makes no sense. So, 
be aware of that because he played kind of okay c6 on the first move is already to prepare d5 but playing these two moves already c6 and e6 doesn't make a good impression and felt a little bit too passive so early and yeah also small criticism on the knight d7 move here like i mentioned you know get your king set pieces out and get castled other than that overall a good game and yeah ho hopefully you get some points here you can work with and keep on improving uh, i like to post thanks for posting uh, see you guys later. Bye-bye.